Okay, form work. Uh, we'll start with footings. There are two main types of footings, continuous strip footings on which walls will be erected and isolated spread footings, which are used to support isolated interior columns. Continuous strip footings follow the shape and perimeter of the wall and are wider than the wall they support. They're typically formed on both sides and braced on the top and sides at two to three foot intervals. Spread footings are isolated masses of concrete, often square or rectangular in shape, with thickness varying from 12 inches to 24 inches. These spread footings support point loads from columns that rest on them. Combined footings are spread footings that carry loads at two or more column points. Spread footings are priced by the piece or each. Retaining walls. A wall or a retaining wall is cast in place on top of the footing and is used to retain the soil at or below grade. Form work for the foundation wall is typically made of smooth plywood sheeting applied with two inch by four inch bracing or steel frames called whalers. Foundation walls are made by doubling form work on the top of the strip footing. This creates a narrow box that is typically six inches to eight inches wide that holds the liquid concrete while it is cast in place. Ties are a narrow box is held in place by ties that are typically placed 24 inch on center both horizontally and vertically. Greater hydrostatic pressure may require more ties and more whalers. Whalers are horizontal wood or metal braces that help contain the hydrostatic pressure on the wood sheeting. Your dead load is the average concrete has a dead load weight of 150 pounds per cubic foot, including the reinforcing. The live load is calculated to be 50 pounds per cubic foot for workers and equipment, and if buggies are used, a live load factor of 75 cubic feet is used. If you want to calculate the dead load pressure being exerted on a six inch slab, you would say 150 pounds cubic foot divided by 12 inches equals 12.5 pounds per cubic inch times your six inches equals 75 pounds cubic feet of pressure on a six inch slab. A pier is a short column of concrete typically reinforced with rebar that is used to support structural load points. Grade beams. Grade beams are horizontal beams set on concrete piers that in turn set on spread footings. In a beam or slab holding a dead or live load, both vertical and horizontal shear are present, and the net result of the two forces is, all, is called diagonal tension. A crack resulting from these forces always occurs near the support and extends upward and outward at an angle of approximately 45 degrees to the top. Stirrups. To resist the diagonal tension, small U or W-shaped bars called stirrups are used and are placed vertically across the beam since shear is usually at a maximum near the support and decreases towards mid-span, the stirrups are more closely spaced near the support and spaced increasingly further apart towards mid-span. Steel is usually used to resist tension forces, but in columns it's used to resist compression forces. Since bars are about 20 times stronger than an equivalent area of concrete, they are used to carry part of the column load. The concrete and the steel work together and the result is a column that is much smaller in size and lighter in weight. Pile foundations are used where the subgrade is too soft to provide adequate bearing for a normal footing. Piles are driven, a spread footing is poured, and a column is placed on the spread footing. After the piles for each footing are driven, they are cut off at the same level. This is usually about six inches above the bottom of the footing. Expansion joints are typically filled with a joint filler, which is an asphalt impregnated fibrous board four inches to six inches tall that is used to allow for safe expansion and contraction of the concrete. Expansion joints are usually placed at the perimeter of the concrete slab where it abuts a stirrup footing or spread footing. Control joints are a sawed groove in the concrete surface that regulates cracking as a result of settling caused by dimensional changes in large pores of concrete. Reinforcing is the placing of steel bars and wire lath within the formwork prior to the placing of the concrete. 
Welded wire fabric is used to control contraction in the concrete and to reduce cracking due to settling. Reinforcing bars, called rebar, is deformed or gnarled round bars of high grade steel. Rebar comes in standard sizes of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 18. The number denotes approximately the diameter of the bar in eighths of an inch. So number 3 is 3 eighths, number 4 is 4 eighths, number 5 is 5 eighths, etc. Sizes and weights per foot of bar are given on a table page 6.3 of placing reinforcing bars. You may need that on the contractor's exam to calculate how many tons of rebar you need to order. On the exam, they don't use the term rebar, and in fact, if there's a problem and the answer has rebar in it, it's probably the wrong answer. Okay? They call them reinforcing bars. Reinforcing bar calculations. You will be given the dimensions of the slab, or they will be on the plans. You will be told the spacing longitudinally, the length, such as 16 inch on center. You will be told the spacing transverse, or the width, such as 12 inch on center. You divide the slab length by the spacing on center multiplied by the width. Divide the slab width by the spacing on center multiplied by the length. Add both of these dimensions together. Find the table with the weight per pound for the rebar you're using, for the number of rebar you're using. Multiply the linear feet by the weight per pound. And on large jobs, you want to convert to tons. Spirals, again, are used in spirally reinforced columns, piers, and piles, and are made of deformed bar, plain bar, or wire bent to specified diameter into a form similar to that of a coiled spring. The spacing of the bar is important, and spacers are sometimes provided to hold the spacing, known as pitch. That's the end.